Why is everyone always in such a noisy rush, especially when it comes to eating? I mean, there is a time for fast, but there's also definitely a time for slow. Salt cod cakes with a confit of colored peppers, slowly baked lamb with wine and garlic, served with baked tomatoes, boulangère potatoes, potato slices slowly cooked in stock until they're meltingly good, and rhubarb water, a refreshing pink summertime treat. A whole French menu that's an ode to slow. Well, speed is highly overrated, if you ask me. Especially in the kitchen. I get so flustered if I'm trying to cook fast and run around and do too many things at once. And so today, I'm not doing any of it. Everything is slow, takes forever. Starting with brown dad cakes, fish and potato cakes, and caramelized peppers. You need the oven at 300. I love this recipe because it really shows what slow cooking can do that fast cooking can't. I'm using three types of peppers because they're so pretty when they're together. Spread out the peppers, Everything. nice and crunchy, and then a whole head of garlic, sliced. Now that looks like a lot, it is a lot, but it gets very dense and sweet and it's not at all sharp garlic by the time it's roasted. And then, tiny cherry tomatoes also get very candied. A little salt and pepper. And then olive oil and quite a generous drizzle. That's good. And then into the oven for three hours. You can ignore them. Now I'm making my brandad cakes. So this I've had soaking for two days. It's very salty, really hard salt cod. And you should change the water, cold water, a couple of times. I'm putting the potatoes right in with them. I'm going to separate the fish from the potatoes later, so I'm keeping them in big enough chunks to fish out. Now, put the bouquet garni, thyme and a bay leaf, parsley. I'm just keeping the stem, it doesn't matter. They're all getting fished out at the end. A little more garlic. Can never have enough. That's just covered with water. Maybe I'll put a bit of pepper, but I'll leave out the salt because I'm not sure how salty the cod is already. And that needs to cook until the potatoes are tender and the fish is really flaky. About 15 minutes or so. An experiment. So just check, really, the fish will be cooked faster than the potatoes. You want them nice and soft and drain it. Get rid of the bouquet garni. And to mash the potatoes, a little cream. And just flake the fish. It doesn't really matter what the ratio is, as long as they hold together. 
Usually I do equal weights. So I'm just adding a little more salt, pepper. This is hot paprika. Ooh, smoky. I think some chives since I didn't put onion. Parsley. Looks nice. Now, this is my little experiment. A friend of mine buys panko, which are Japanese breadcrumbs, and they're really crunchy. So I thought I should buy some too and see what happens. Usually I just dredge them in flour and fry them, but I have to try new things now and again. Some olive oil in the pan. This is just for a little crunch on the outside. And just throw them into a hot, oily pan. Just fry them till they're golden. Okay, panko's good. I think it might even be better than flour for these because it really makes them nice and golden and crisp. Now those peppers. Just have a nice candied heap of peppers on top to garnish. Mm. The panko's great. Crunchy, crunchy, and then you sink right into your smooth, creamy little potato cake. I have more slow things. I have a slow lamb that cooks for hours until it's crushingly soft, and baked tomatoes. such a grouch if I'm rushed. In fact, in the morning I have to get up at least two hours before I leave the house just so I can have a cup of tea in peace. I just can't cook fast and neither can my lamb. This is a slow leg of lamb and herbs. This is very slow, 300. So it gets the pan good and hot because you want it to sear. Lots of salt and pepper. Salt and peppered leg o' lamb. Hope it's hot enough. Let's just to give it color. It's a big leg. So once that's brown, just to get the bits off the bottom. Deglaze with a bit of wine. Some thyme, we have a big bunch. And rosemary. Then, garlic. Instead of putting garlic in the lamb, all I do is break a head, and you just throw the garlic in around the lamb. And you don't even have to peel them because they'll cook down. They have so much time. And bay leaves. Looks so pretty like that. It's about to smell very nice too. So the lamb needs four hours, which in France would be just enough time to go meet a friend for coffee.
You know why these places thrive in France? It's because so many people stop and take the time to eat. It's not always grabbing a coffee and running out the door with it. You sit down and have it. You can have a water and sit in a cafe all afternoon. I wish we would take more time like that. Instead of always rushing around everywhere, take time to sit, savor what you're having, and watch the world go by. Little baked tomatoes on the side. Just slicing them through the, their midriffs. And then I need a little more garlic. So I'm just mixing garlic and breadcrumbs. And parsley. So that's all to that. And just mix it up. A little salt. Putting crunchy salt. Salt and pepper. And then just a little on top of each one. Voila! And then, olive oil on top. And it goes in the oven for 15 minutes, which means I can just clean up and then go swing. Sorry I'm late. How's the boat? Uh, the boat's fine. We can drink rosé and spend five hours on lunch. Look at this. Oh my god, that is beautiful. Doesn't that smell fantastic? Uh, uh, look, I gotta, I'll step outside for one second. This is Josh. Joshua, check out this beautiful land. Laura, you're gonna kill me, but I gotta go. Um, can you come to the boat later? Okay. The world is crazy. Not upset. I'm gonna eat the lamb all by myself. I can't believe it. It's not totally crushing, it's just nice and mm, soft. It's so good. Mmm, it just melts in your mouth. I wonder if it does need potatoes, though. I have a recipe for pommes de terre à la boulangère. Well, it's a slow day. I'm in a slow mood for a slow food. And now, melting potatoes in stock, pommes de terre boulangère. These are called pommes de terre à la boulangère because that means the baker's wife. And anything à la boulangère you can think of as something that was in the oven for a long time, as are these. It's maybe too much. big chunk of butter and just sliced onions. So I just want these fried until they're golden. I'm put some thyme in. And I'm using different sizes of potatoes because I tried it once and I liked how it looked. All those different rings. Baby ones, big one, red. And I'm not peeling them, they're just scrubbed because it looks kind of rustic. Oh, 
Oh, I need the oven on. Oven on. 300, that's my temperature du jour. So just put some onions in the bottom. And then you can just layer in a even but casual way. You need salt and pepper. I'm salting and peppering as I go. Time. And another layer of silky onions. And then a last layer of potatoes. It's really like a potato gratin only. There's no milk. What there is is stock. I think because the butcher's wife got together with the baker's wife on the recipe project. And just pour in enough to come up the sides. This is beef stock, but you can use chicken stock if you like. You can use vegetable, but I always find it richer with uh, meat stock. And then you can cover it if you want to, but if you do cover it, then take off the cover towards the last hour just to get rid of any liquid left. There should be no liquid when it's done. So that could be two hours, three. Depends on the size of your dish. I'll check it at two. Potatoes worth waiting for. They're so soft and steamy down there. And you get onion and potato all soft and sweet, and it's soaked up all that liquid. So they're really rich. Mmm, mmm. They're almost creamy. You just get little flecks of thyme, too. This is perfect with a roast because that's a Sunday lunch kind of thing, and you can just throw it in the oven and enjoy with something a little crisper. It's also good if you want to reheat it and transport it, which I do, because I'm going to give it to Joshua, along with something else. I'm making rhubarb water next. It's so pretty and pink. Very irresistible. It's been months since I wrote a letter. How embarrassing. Now I have one more slow thing to make in my slow day, which is another thing I started yesterday. It's called rhubarb water. It's very cool and refreshing and pale pink and beautiful, and I love making it. Rhubarb, and you want it nice and pink. Cut the rhubarb. Now as soon as the water boils, Here's part A of the recipe. Pour it over the rhubarb, and this will draw out all the flavor and color by morning. So just set it aside to cool, and then you put it in the fridge overnight, which I already did, thinking I'd have it for myself, but I'm too generous I'm giving it away. This one's from yesterday. See how pale the rhubarb gets? All the color goes right into the water, you'll see. Lots of boiling. So for a liter of water, you need three quarters of a cup of sugar. And also, you're just a little squirt of lemon juice. This just needs to boil five minutes to dissolve the sugar, and it becomes a very thin syrup. So this just has to cool, and while it cools, I need to dress for a picnic on a boat. Look at 
that color. So fantastic. Perfect for little girls. And big ones. Mm. I've made fried salt cod cakes with confit of red pepper, a slow herb and garlic scented lamb with baked tomatoes on the side, melting potatoes in stock, pommes de terre boulangère, and the palest pink drink for summer you can imagine, rhubarb water. Joshua! Laura, how Hi. are you? Oh! I am so I sorry about this afternoon. Offer. Don't worry about it. Mmm, what a gorgeous boat, and look at this big wheel. Um, can I get you something to drink? You're a great man. It's a pink thing. What's this? Maybe you can make some fancy drink with it. It's rhubarb water. It's quite sweet, but I bet a little uh, vodka in there would be good. Life you lead out here. 